Hello and welcome. Today we're working on a capital budgeting problem, the very first maybe simple example that you've seen. We're going to do it in Excel. And so here's what we have. We have a Lima company is evaluating a capital project. The initial cost is going to be 100000 So that is time period zero. And then the net cash flows for years one through four were given 50, 40, 30, 10,000 uh, on each of the four years. We're going to calculate four things. We're going to calculate the net present value, or NPV, the internal rate of return, which is IRR, the profitability index, and the payback period. So I've gone ahead and set up a little table here. So we're going to do the discount rate. The discount rate is going to be 12%. I've already formatted it for percentages. Remember, this is decimal 0.12. So it's not 12 as a whole number, it's 0.12, and we're showing this as a percentage. So that's our discount rate. Years, one through four, and we start with time period zero. So what's our net cash flow for period zero? Well, that's our initial cost of 100,000. I've already formatted this for dollar signs to make it easy to read. And then time period one, the net cash flow is gonna be 50,000, that's year one and then 40,000, 30,000, and then 10,000. All right, so there's our net cash flow each of the years. So we've initially invested 100,000 and we get cash flow, expected uh, net cash flow of those amounts. So what is our net present value? Now net present value discounts all the cash flows beyond time period zero and brings it back to present value and we'll compare it with the 100,000. So net present value, we're going to start with NPV is the function. NPV, start parentheses, and then we need a rate. So we're going to point to the rate of 12%, and then a comma, and what's our values? Our values, we're going to do periods one through four. We're not going to do period zero right now because we're going to discount those all to the present value, which is time period zero. So we're going to close our parentheses. And let me show you what we have. We have 104,000, 104,000, and we need to then add to that the negative 100,000. So we're subtracting the 100,000. So the present value is 104. The net present value is 104 minus the initial 100. So we have net present value of something like $4,239. Now the pennies are not going to matter here. Let me get rid of the pennies. Um, we just need to work with whole dollars here. So the rule on net present value, if it's greater than zero, then you would accept because we know that we've achieved a little bit more than the discount rate of 12%. If it were exactly zero, then we would have an exactly 12% internal rate of return. If the net present value is less than zero, we know we have not achieved the 12%. Maybe we only achieved 10% or 9.8 or whatever. So our internal rate of return is a similar measure, except instead of working with the dollar amount, we work with the rate of return. So the internal rate of return is going to be IRR is our function. And we're just going to look at the values, including the 100,000. It knows the 100,000 is at time period zero. We're going to close our parentheses. And we get something like 14.49% is our internal rate of return. Now we knew that was going to be a little bit higher than 12% because this is positive. The decision is if your internal rate of return is greater than your discount rate or your required rate, then you would accept. So both of these are the signal, same signal to accept. Now let's look at profitability index. Profitability index is going to take the present value calculation which was that 104,000 divided by the 100,000. So we're going to get something like 1.04 or something like that. I made that first number easy so we can kind of think through it a little bit easier than if it were a random number like 57,000 or whatever. All right, so the profitability index, we're going to take the NPV, calculate it just like we did a minute ago, of all four years, comma, uh, no, we need to do the rate first, sorry. The rate is 12%, and then comma, 
all four years, one through four. Close the parentheses. And so our profitability index starts with 104,000. And then we're going to modify this and we're going to divide by, we don't want to divide by the 100,000 that's negative. So I'm going to make negative 100,000 to make it positive. So 104 divided by 100, we should end up with a number. The profitability index is 1.04. This is the same basic information as net present value, but it puts it in, in um, a decimal format rather than a dollar format. So 1.04 means we get 104,000 in present value versus our cost of 100,000 in present value. All right, the last one, let's do the payback period. Payback period, we need to calculate one more thing. We need to calculate the cumulative cash flows. The cumulative cash flows here. The cumulative cash flows, we're going to start with the first year we spent 100,000 and then we received 50,000. So it, our negative now is down to 50,000. And we're going to copy this all the way down. So the payback period is the idea of when do we receive the full 100,000? At what point do we receive 100,000? Well, we receive 50 and then 40 more, that's 90, and we need 10,000 more of that 30,000 level. So here's our little formula here. It's not a um, Excel function, but we're just going to take the two. We're going to look at the last negative year. So it's going to be two plus need to run some math here. We need to take the two plus the partial year, negative 10,000. So we're going to make it positive, divided by the 30,000. Close our parentheses. We're going to end up with a number here, 2.33. So we're going to take this 10,000. We receive cash flows of 30 for the year, so we assume that it happens equally throughout the year. So this is in terms of years. So I'm going to label this years. So the payback period is 2.33 years. Now the problem with the payback period is it's not discounted cash flows. There is such a thing as discounted payback period. And so it would take a little bit longer because the dollars are not equal. So the most important items are the net present value, internal rate of return, we use those many, many times. Those are the most popular and they should give the same signal. One is in terms of dollars and one's in terms of the rate. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.